Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm Eric for President and you know the drill, your one-stop shop for five VR stories you missed over the past couple days, but as always, a few quick shout outs to get through. Congrats to the Cloudhead Game Studio and everyone involved with Pistol Whip for winning the DICE Awards, immersive reality game of the year, well deserved. Now it's not Blade and Sorcery, but Gladius for the Oculus Quest is the closest thing to it so far. Download instructions will be in the video description. And the final week of February is here, so join the Oculus Quest headset giveaway for this channel before it ends at the end of the month. As always, links and sources for everything discussed in this video will be in the video description. All timestamps for all stories discussed will be in the pinned comment, that way you can watch the stories that most interest you. And of course, we're gonna be giving away the Oculus Quest headset that was sponsored by O-Shape in this video, so I have something to say about that later, and good luck to everyone involved. With that being said, I have a tremendous amount that I wanna get through quickly, so let's jump right into the VR news. There have been a couple games you all in the comment sections ask about a lot, and we finally have some news on two Oculus Quest games coming this year. Let's jump real quick into it. Starting with Onward News in their monthly sit rep on February 18th, we get finally some acknowledgement of the Oculus Quest port. Now Onward's a military simulator paced multiplayer shooter. This is your go-to shooter for those wanting slower, more calculated and realistic gunfights in comparison to say Pavlov, which is a quicker arcade-like style. While no release date was given, we have our first official status update from Downpour Interactive. And in their statement, they say, we are actively alpha testing and will soon be in beta testing in which we will introduce more QA testers from the community. Now we won't get another sit rep from Onward basically until Quest Info is ready, but look forward to seeing Oculus Quest versus PC comparisons, five versus five cross-platform footage, and more whenever that sit rep comes. And we finally have some news about Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted for the Oculus Quest as well. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted is a collection of classic and original mini games set in the Five Nights universe, which released in May of 2019 to practically perfect reviews and has been one of the most requested Oculus Quest ports since its announcement. In the email sent to Steel Wolf Studios by the Apocalypse Gamer, we have an end to 100% complete radio silence and Five Nights at Freddy's has teamed up with Oculus and right now is shooting for late first quarter to early second quarter 2020 release. So that's about March to June based on that statement. You all have been asking me about Onward and Five Nights at Freddy's for a long time. I'm happy to have some info. Let me know what you think down in the comments. You may have also seen a video, a hand tracking demo video going around and kind of viral on Reddit and Twitter. I think it's a big deal. I'd like to share it here and tell you why. So for those who haven't seen it, this was made by Daniel Buchamp at Push Matrix on Twitter and shows a very interesting hand tracking concept. No, that is not him throwing a controller. This is all controllerless and shows a concept where you can artificially throw your hand in game and still use the appendix via hand track. Basically, it's Thing from the Adams Family and what looks to be a terrific use of this developing tech in a very unique VR only concept. Now, Daniel seems to be showing off quite a bit lately with his yo-yo demo as well. And between both him and Ace Thailand working on other finger tracking demos, it really shows how value added hand tracking can be. Now I bring this up because we talked in the past video about what makes a VR experience and sometimes a game can just be downright awesome, but sometimes these VR experiences are random, they're unique to each user, you can't predict them. But things like this, developers who are working on unique VR only concepts like that hand tracking, throwing your limb and using it, those will create many unique experiences they bring in more users because they see this kind of stuff that they've always dreamt of trying. And Daniel, this is why you're the VR badass of the day because you do amazing stuff like this. Thank you for it. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments. But of course, I'm usually not too opinionated on this channel, but I am on this one because as soon as you thought Vive was dying, they come out with three new headsets and some of the slimiest, shadiest marketing that I've seen to date for a VR company. Let's talk about it. I have quite a bit to say, including something I think is slimy by HTC, of course. So let's go through a new line of HTC headsets, starting with the most cost-effective model to the most costly version. Starting off with the entry-level unit, the Vive Cosmos Play is similar to the standard Cosmos with a few major differences. It will come without built-in headphones, which can be purchased separately. And while all specs are the same in functionality as the Cosmos, the major difference is the Vive Cosmos Play will have four cameras, two on the front and two on the side, compared to the six cameras positioned on the standard Cosmos. No price is confirmed here, but rumors will be around $400 to $500, but that's speculative at this point. Next, there's the Vive Cosmos Elite, the gamer-focused headset. This one will come pre-installed with an external tracking faceplate and can be paired with SteamVR base stations for better tracking. This bundle will include two 1.0 base stations, 
and Vive 1 controllers. And yes, you heard that correctly, we're using older base stations and going back to Vive 1s. And this package should be launching at $899 US. And finally, we have the highest end unit, the Vive Cosmos XR, which represents a mixed reality experience. This is going to be primarily an enterprise headset with practically the same specs and cameras as the Vive Cosmos Play, but with two additional pass-through cameras for mixed reality and augmented reality applications. And while no confirmed price is out there yet, if I took a guess, 1.5K at the minimum, but that's a guess. So now you know a little bit about all three major headsets that they are releasing soon. All links for these will be in the video description, but a trailer came out for it as well. And it's one of the shadiest things I think I've ever seen for a VR trailer headset. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. In a new trailer released by the HTC Vive Cosmos, you will probably notice how hard they are trying to hide the wire during play, tucking it in and holding tightly under the player's shirts. Most notably, about 46 seconds into the trailer, a man walks from an entirely different room, no wireless adapter, sits on the couch and begins using the headset. And this to me signifies a standalone unit and standalone functionality when in fact that is nowhere to be seen. It's misleading with no disclaimers anywhere. I see it as purposeful on HTC's part, but that's just my opinion and I pass that one off to you. Now you know a little bit about all three headsets that are coming out along again with my opinion, there's slimy marketing on it, but I really wanna hear your thoughts. Please let me know what you think about this entire situation down in the comments. And for the sake of time, two quick things I do wanna say is one, I do think they're hurting consumer VR between education, and it's mostly VR education, many people don't know what they're looking for. They don't know the research six degrees of freedom, three degrees of freedom, AR, MR, XR, VR, there's a lot of terms. Let me throw some more terms at you as I'm spitballing here. Vive Focus, Vive Focus Plus, Vive, Vive Pro, Vive Pro I, Cosmos XR, Cosmos Play, Cosmos, Cosmos Elite, and I, there's more, there's more, there's too many and there's not enough education, shady marketing practices, they are hurting their own consumer VR brand and they're killing their VR consumer by doing this. That's my opinion, they muddy the water too much. In addition, and this is petty, but number two, the Vive Cosmos launched with fairly poor tracking when it started. It has gotten better, as all headsets start with bad tracking and get better, but they're still not good enough for me to use it for first person shooting games online. I've tried it numerous times since launch. They're not usable. And the Vive Focus Play, excuse me, the Vive Cosmos Play, that's how hard it is to remember these names. Four cameras, I don't think it's gonna cut it, but time will tell. Don't be an early adopter on these if you're trying to figure out which headset. Just go to the Rift S, probably compare it to it. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. HTC wasn't a full bust though. They did come out with a prototype of something that shows me a lot of promise for the future and I'm happy to see it. Under the project Proton label, this next gen lightweight headset is quoted by HTC CEO to be really, really close to normal glasses. Now, Project Proton has no specs and very minimal info out. It's basically a prototype of the way future XR glasses may be. Now, there could be two versions of this, with one being an all-in-one headset and the other a two-part HMD. Both headsets can be seen with front-facing cameras, hinting at inside-out tracking, but no way to really tell. We can also see the power pack on the back, which may help with weight distribution, as well with two small onboard speakers. Now that's just a prototype, very bare bones information. More of this will be in the video description, but I like where VR is going. I like seeing more and more headsets that come out in a minimalist nature. Smaller is better and more fashionable. And I know a lot of people say they don't care what they look like in a VR headset. And while that's very true, I believe you, it does matter to a lot of people. Not to me, but it matters to a lot of people and then becoming more fashionable and more socially acceptable in how they look, it's gonna help VR. So I'm liking, I don't know if HTC is gonna ever come out with this being usable. I'm rooting for them, I really am. I like, I like HTC, I want them to do well, but I like where these headsets are at least going. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And of course we have to give away an Oculus Quest headset sponsored by O-Shape, and I will say this. They gave me the headset to do with whatever I want. The reason I did this with them, although I, if anyone believes me on it, these developers actually really care about VR. I fully believe that not only do they care about their game, of course, but they care about VR. And we align in the same way. All they want to do is get VR out to people. That's all I want to do. And because of that, I'm very excited they gave us the opportunity to get one of you all an Oculus Quest headset. It means a lot to me, and I hope that you give O-Shape a try. If you've ever thought about playing it, it's a really fun game. Go out and get O-Shape. It is out right now on the Oculus Quest. The winner of the Oculus Quest headset is Wesley down here. Wesley, congrats, you won. Just reach out to me. Find me on Discord, Twitter, uh, you, my email's on the YouTube page. Just reach out to me by my next video. We'll figure this out. A couple questions to get you your headset. But with that being said, guys, leave a like to support this video. It means a lot so we can keep everything going, these giveaways going. Subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss an upload. Join the Patreon because everything put in there is reinvested back to you guys. 
I love giving VR headsets away. I love making people happy, and I can't wait for the next video, VR Space Cowboys. <sighs>